If you have been watching my channel for a while now and watching my videos and really applying the stuff that I'm teaching you, you are working on your emotional maturity and chances are you have come a really long way. And I know that a lot of you have come a long way because I get notes and I get messages from you guys telling me how much this stuff has been changing your life and how it's been changing how you think and how you feel. And that is emotional maturity. So big props to you for valuing yourself enough to do this life changing work. So let's talk about how to know how emotionally mature you are right now, where you are in your journey and where you may need to do some more work. And this is not an evaluation of someone's worth or value. This isn't about saying that you're a good person if you're further along in your emotional maturity than someone else. This is just about looking at where you might need to still polish things up and still smooth out the edges, some things to work on. But absolutely, you are enough and you are significant and worthy and valuable for who you are right now. There is no prerequisite to worthiness. This is not, not about becoming a better person, about becoming a more worthy person. This is about feeling better. This is about you investing in yourself so you can like yourself and your life more. And that's what comes when we become more emotionally mature. So we're gonna talk about it. If you are new here, welcome to our amazing little corner on the internet. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel so that you can stay connected with us and also introduce yourself in the comment section below, would love to hear from you. And if you are not new, so glad you're back. Always good to have you here. Love having conversations with you, my return people, my, my loyal people, my incredible humans who come back week after week to do this work. My name is Julia Christina and I am a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, and the creator of the Breakthrough Coaching Program. I have a master's degree in counseling psychology and I work to help heart center go-getter men and women break through worry, anxiety, and self-doubt so that they can get out of their heads, get into their lives, and love themselves and their lives more every day. So there are several ways to know how emotionally mature you are and where you are in your journey. Um, but I'm going to talk about five of the big ones today. And some of them are going to be things that we've talked about before on here. But let's take stock. Let's look at this stuff. And for those of you who are new, um, you're going to learn a lot in our session today, in our, in our talk today. So the first sign that you are becoming more emotionally mature is you respond instead of react to situations. When something happens that triggers you or upsets you or creates an emotional response in you, you take a second, you take a step back, you take a breath, you evaluate, you get curious, you try to understand what's going on, <clears throat> why you are having a reaction to this, what thoughts you are thinking, what interpretations you are making, what stuff is coming up for you. And you evaluate, you take a step back, you get clear, and then you respond to the situation in a more mature, responsible, and respectful way. It's good for you, it's good for your relationships. Everyone wins when we become more responsive versus reactive. The next, or so <laughs> I guess some signs that you do have some work to do is if you fly off the handle within a split second, if you end up saying things that you regret later, if you do things that you feel bad about, if you yell or pout or retaliate or say things that are aggressive or passive aggressive to someone, if you just like offset your emotions to someone else, even if they have offset their emotions onto you, then you just end up offsetting them right back at them. And then that does not go anywhere good. So signs you have some work to do. And yeah, truth be told, we all do it. We all get emotional. We all do things and say things that are emotionally immature. I definitely do. I have, still have work to do in this area. It's a journey. It's not a destination. But we are learning and we are growing and we are doing the work and we are, we are taking responsibility all the time. And so signs you have some work to do is if you are just like an emotional ticking time bomb that is exploding or imploding um, and, and not managing your emotions well when things are happening around you. The next sign um, that you are growing in your emotional maturity is that you know that nothing is personal. That you understand that people more often than not are not doing things against you, they are doing things for them. That 
other people are, even if they are taking something out on you, it is because they are not dealing with it well, they are not handling it well, and they are, not, they are reacting instead of responding. That nothing is personal. Every time we treat someone a certain way, it's an, our own sort of offset of our own emotional state. It's our own ideas and expectations about how someone else needs to be and they are not fulfilling our expectations. They are not doing what we want them to do. I have a whole video on how nothing is personal. I'm gonna put the link in the description below so you can go and watch that if this is a new concept for you. But for those of you who have been with me, you get this, you know this. And if you have been taking a step back and not taking things so personally and really looking at the situation, having more clear eyes when something happens, when someone does something or said something and you're not all of a sudden or automatically coming down on yourself or criticizing yourself or judging yourself and thinking that you're this terrible, awful human being and that everyone's out to get you and the world is this horrible, awful place and going into that mode. If you are taking a step back and if you are talking yourself through it, I mean like, okay, this hurt my feelings. I didn't like this, but what's really going on here? This isn't personal. What might they have going on? What might be their idea of what a normal, reasonable, rational way of handling a situation or talking about something or addressing something that might not be the same as my idea of what's normal and rational and reasonable and responsible. Signs you have some work to do is that if you take everything personally, if you think that other people are out to get you, if you think that other people are making you miserable, that other people have more control over your mind and emotions than you do, um, if you think that no, if anything little thing happens that it's a sure sign that someone doesn't like you and if someone doesn't like you, that means that you are not good enough in some way, that you're a reject, that you're a loser. So signs that you have some work to do. If that stuff is coming up for you whenever anything happens, no matter how big or small. The next sign that you are growing in your emotional maturity is if you allow other people to not like you and you also allow yourself to be misunderstood. Where you don't have to insist that everyone like and approve and agree with you and you don't have to also don't believe that other people have to understand you. That they don't have to get who you are and what you are and why you are and you don't go around apologizing for who you are or trying to make people okay with who you are. And the truth is, the reason why we need other people to be okay with who we are is so that we can feel okay with who we are. But if we are doing our own work and deciding and getting good and right within ourselves and allowing ourselves to be okay with who we are, irrelevant of other people's ideas or opinions, then we cut out the middleman and we don't need them to approve of us in order for us to be okay with who we are. We allow other people to dislike us. We get that I'm not everybody's brownie. <laughs> you know that, you know, when it comes to brownies, a lot of people like brownies, but some people don't like brownies. And if someone doesn't want a brownie, if you're offering brownies and someone doesn't want a brownie, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the brownie. They just don't like brownies or they're on a cleanse or they have a gluten-free diet or chocolate gives them hives or they just don't feel like a brownie at that moment. It has nothing to do with the brownies. And so knowing that other people are allowed to not like us and they are allowed to not understand us. And that has nothing to do with how great we are. It has nothing to do with the brownies. It has nothing to do with how great we are. And it has and should have nothing to do with how we feel about ourselves. If we have done the work and if we have gotten right within, we don't need so much stuff on the out. Sign that you have some work to do. Some signs that you have some work to do in this area is if you find yourself people pleasing, if you find yourself pretending to be someone else in order to get people to like and approve of you, if you let or, are letting people cross your boundaries, you're not doing anything about it, you're kind of just a free for all, and you know it doesn't feel good and you don't like it, but you don't want to offend anyone, you don't want them to not like you if you stand up or speak up or state the rules for playing in your yard. Um, if you feel like you need to over explain yourself, if you feel like you don't speak up and say what you want, think, need, and feel because you're worried about 
someone not liking you or judging you or criticizing you for it. Um, if you feel like you need to apologize for your choices, if you feel like you need to get people to approve of and understand, even if, you're, if it's your parents, even if it's your partner, and, and thinking that everyone has to approve and agree with you in order for what you want, think and need and feel and choose to be okay. The next sign that you are growing in your emotional maturity is that you no longer, or at least not as often, give other people more control over your mind and emotions than you have. You know that it is your thoughts that create your emotional state. You know that it's what you make something mean that creates your feelings, your emotional reaction. That is not what somebody else is doing that is creating that. They don't have control over that. It's what you're making it mean that is giving you the emotional reaction or the response to that situation. And so you are taking that power back and getting in charge of your mind and your emotions instead of giving that to other people to do whatever they want with. <laughs> some signs that you have some work to do is if you still think that other people are making you feel a certain way. If you still think that you're blaming other people for your feelings for your thoughts and you are giving that power to them regardless of what's going on in your life you are always in charge of your own mind and your own emotions somebody else cannot have unless you give them more more control over your mind and emotions than you have and i don't know about you but the idea of giving someone giving that away to somebody else I don't want that. That does not feel good. I don't want to feel like somebody else has more power over my mind and emotions than I have. I want to know that that is up to me. The next sign that you are growing in your emotional maturity is, as we've talked about before, if you've been here before, you don't believe everything you think. You know that your thoughts are not always truths. And you don't just buy into whatever thought pops in your head. Just because you have a thought that comes into your head, you don't just buy into it or believe it or get all wrapped up into it. It's not like this divine kind of wisdom welling up from deep within that's coming and telling you that this is who you are and this is what you deserve. And this is you know, how other people should be able to treat you because you're not good enough or because everyone else is better than you or because you're not worthy of this because you don't have what it takes or whatever that is. You don't believe all of those thoughts or you can't do this you're not capable of this you're not qualified for this you're not good enough for this all of those thoughts that come in you don't just buy into them you know that your thoughts are not always truths and you're able to take a step back and you're able to observe yourself thinking and that's what consciousness is that's what it is to be a conscious being and to recognize that we are conscious beings that we are not our thoughts we are the thinker of our thoughts we are the being who is thinking those thoughts and often those thoughts are not divine wisdom <laughs> they are learned they are absorbed they are inherited beliefs that we have taken in from our society from our culture from our family of origin these things that we've sort of just absorbed and taken in and and believed as truth about who we are and what we are and what we deserve instead of actually taking a step back and, and connecting with ourselves and listening to ourselves and deciding who I am based on who I am, not based on who other people think or say or expect me to be. Signs you have some work to do. You believe everything you think. You take it as divine truth, you get caught in unhelpful thought spirals and beliefs and insist that just because those thoughts are there, it means that they are right and they are true and there is no other option. This is who you are. This is how it is. This is what you deserve. This is what life is about. Instead of taking a step back and deciding, are those thoughts helpful? Are those thoughts serving? Are those thoughts useful, motivating, encouraging, moving me forward, bringing up the feelings that I want to be feeling? If not, we got some work to do. And speaking of consciousness and speaking of taking a step back, if this is a new thing for you, um, then I want you to make sure that you download my 10 minute guided mindfulness exercise. And this is just gonna really be that, that just kind of 
um, foundational introduction to mindfulness and learning how to take a step back and not get so caught up in everything that's happening in and around us. So make sure you grab that download. It's going to be in the description below. And also if going deeper, into this work and building that emotional maturity and getting more ha more of a handle on your mind and emotions, not getting so caught up in everything that's happening around you, that's something that you are ready for, you wanna go deeper with this work, then I highly recommend taking my Unmess Your Emotions um, course. I was gonna say crash course. It is a crash course, there's a lot in it. Um, it's two hours of teaching and training and, and exercises and processes to go through to change the way you think and build that emotional maturity if this is something that you want to be doing and really learning how to do properly in ways that work and last. Make sure you grab that course. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it out if you think more people need to hear this and recognize themselves for where they are and also be able to look at some areas that they need to work on. This isn't evaluation of, of the worth of a human being, this is just about growth and learning and expanding and making life, our lives count and be able to believe and know that we can feel the way we wanna be feeling. We could be able to have the life that we want to have, even if your thoughts <laughs> are telling you otherwise. Thanks so much for being here. Love having you here always. Let me know in the comment section below what connected with you, what brought, what, the, what did this bring up on you? Would love to hear that as well. Until next time, take good care.